Of all the deer species in the world, the axis or chittle deer must be one of the most beautiful. And to some people they're an absolute pleasure to have around, while to others they're nothing more than the pest. Let's move on now with some footage of good hunting buddies from around Australia as they battle the heat, the bull dust, the thunderstorms and the BS in their search for some top class free range trophy stags. Let's go. Now to come up here and hunt chittle deer in an environment that is unnatural to them but one that they've adapted very well to is a very unique experience and it's something that I'd say all hunters should do at least once in their life. Channel country, I can see it in my mind. The rain to cast their spell, well. And city living has got me in this bind. And days no more. Welcome to Chittle Deer Country, North Queensland. I'm here on the banks of the beautiful Basalt River which could be described as the centre of Chittledeer country for Queensland. The Chittledeer were first released at Maryvale Station, which is only a few miles up the road here, back in 1886 by William Hand. Now William was a, a quite renowned explorer and early pastoralist. He brought these original two stags and two does over on a clipper from Salon and had them as house pets at his property. Now, up here we'll have a look at a grave, and this grave gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the history that's along this basalt area. Now this lonely grave site gives testimony to just how hard and how dangerous life was in these early days up here in central Queensland. There's actually three parts to the story of this gravestone. Firstly, there's Joseph Hahn, who was drowned while trying to get back across the swollen, flooded Basalt River. His wife Elizabeth, she died only a few months later on, aged 54 years old, and she's buried here in this gravesite. Also, there is the son of William and Mary Han. He died in February 1865, aged two weeks old. To meet you, Clark. He's a bit of a cheeky one, I think. This one. No, not me. I am. Not you? Same, no. No, the one. I'm the cheeky one. I always will be. <laughs> Plenty of bunks in here. Obviously, sleeps quite a few. And I used to say the weather up here is pretty warm. Need plenty of water. Need plenty of water. There'd be two pals. Keen as mustard. Particularly this bloke on the right, who's hopefully going to have first shot. Sweating to death already. Sweating to death already, Tone? Yeah. I haven't even been outside. <laughs> it's warm, isn't it? Occasionally, your bigger boys might start moving through. Through the mobs, so you can be coming out here with more than this. There's a monster coming through, and all the time they don't stay long. How much is the big juice on this place, Mark? It's. I think it's just on the 70. 70,000 acres. Yeah, 40, and then the other one over here is about 40,000. Oftentimes you see a big mob of deer along here, there's nothing much here at the moment, but any one of these little guts could hide 100, 200 deer just lying in under the shade. The first thing to do was to head up on top of one of the rocky bluffs that are a feature on this property and have a look out across the great expanses of green grass and try and locate where the mobs of stags were at the moment. 
We'd had some pretty good rain in previous weeks, so the grass was greening up everywhere. It wasn't long before we spotted our first wallaroo stationed on the side of the hill, and close beside him was our first chittle stag. This little guy wasn't just licking his butt, he was doing something far more important than that. He was cleaning one of his best self-defense mechanisms. Just like the white-tailed deer, the axis, they love to use their tail as a warning device. And as soon as they see anything that moves or is unfamiliar in their territory, they'll flash the tail and send a warning to all other deer. For hunters not familiar with hunting chittle or axis deer, this is a lovely style of four or five year old stag. You can see by his face he's quite young. He's got that nice wine glass shaped head of about 27 and a half, 28 inches in length. He's got one inner tine that's a little bit shorter than the other, but still a very nice shaped head on a young stag. It'll make a terrific trophy in years to come and put a good return back to the landowners and a smile on the face of a happy hunter. This little stag would weigh in about the 70 to 75 kilos in body weight. After about half an hour of careful stalking around the side of this bluff, we could see a good mob of chittle deer up in the uh, distance on the edge of a creek line. So we carefully made our way in under the low bush, around through the rocks, to get as close as we possibly could before the darkness beat us. There seemed to be a really good stag in the middle of the mob, but you can only get small glimpses of his antlers every now and again. We'd broken the distance down to about 200 metres when we ran right across a family group of wallaroos on the side of this hill. We realised that as soon as these roos spooked, the deer would see them and head off back into the creek and our chance would be gone. So I I said to Jacko, get up as close as you can, get over the top of one of these rocks and see if you can hit that big stag in the middle. tricky situations. We had cattle feeding in amongst the deer, deer crossing over in front of each other so it would be quite easy to shoot the wrong stag. We just wait that time, very soon the stag stood up and gave Jacko a clear shot. Good shot sir, good shot. Let's have a look at that again. You'll see the stag here right in the middle of that small group. Well done mate, great shot. Yeah, he, okay. he, he dropped off that back behind us. Video, video. Why not?
Not that beautiful cow. What do you reckon? Nothing succeeds like success. What do you reckon he is? Doesn't matter. Anyone. He's a ripper, mate. Yeah, he's a big old stag. He's perfect. Very nice. Very nice. Well, what are we? It's been the third. Yeah. Third of February, 2008. Many years ago, I said to myself, before I turned the age of 52, I wanted to have shot all the ones in the, the Grand Slam, and this is the last one. So this one's coming back to 83 King Street, Tasmania, to join these mates. <laughs> all the rest. And, uh, well, lovely head, perfectly even. He was in amongst a group of about 30 deer, three or four reasonable stags with him, another couple of lesser ones, 15 or 20 hinds. As you can see, it's 10 past seven, it's uh, getting pretty dark. And uh, we got to within about 150, 175 metres, I suppose. Couldn't get any further, light was running out, and well, one shot kill. Beauty. You can't really do much better than that. Just rubbed out. Still got good pearling. No velvet left. He's a ripper. What do you reckon? He's a ripper. He'd be 30 inches. What about uh, what, there were two there, similar, weren't they? Yeah, there was There's another, one another reasonable there. one there too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was looking for the wrong one for a while. This one was lying down a lot of the time. Yeah, I've seen that one. Was that the one? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah, seen one lying down. Yeah. Was that, wasn't that the one that walked over the bank there? Come over here? There. No, this one was lying down all the time. We were watching the other two. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, hey, look at the one in the middle lying down. And all you could see was his antlers sticking out of the grass. But that's the boy for us. Yeah, nice coronets, light coronets. He's Perfect. an old stag. Old stag. Perfect. Perfect. Could not pass him up, no. even on first afternoon. No. First afternoon, yeah. No. Could not pass him up. It's too good. Three musketeers. You watched him for a little while. Yeah, you obviously see it. Obviously, you obviously see it. Obviously you just straight, straight away. Yeah, you knew he was a shooter. Straight away. Okay. They're About quarter past six, just heading out for our first morning hunt actually. A hot night's sleep in the, in the hut. That no, wasn't too bad. Spotted a mob of deer up on top of the plateau. It's on the other side. This bit of a creek. Just heading down the creek bed to a spring. Down the bottom. There's not many deer tracks at all, only cattle tracks. So I whether the deer have been using them or not. Bath, are we? Where's, where's all the floods? <laughs> it wasn't long before we were up on our first mob of deer. And as two of the guys kept watch from a hill behind us, we moved in close enough to get a good look at this herd. And one of the hinds saw us and sounded the alarm call, and they all scattered, all except for this young stag, a five-year-old and beautiful style, but he sure better get a lot smarter if he wants to get older.
As that mob of deer slowly made its way off across the plain, I climbed a nearby tree, which is a really good tactic in this country because it allows you to see a lot further and pick up mobs of animals that otherwise would go unnoticed. We could see other deer in the distance, so we dropped back down the gully and made our way to where we could see a mob up on a rocky bluff. Oh, we've just seen a 30 inch up on top of this hill behind the swamp. There certainly was a good stag in this mob. We could see him out on one of these rocky lava flows that ran out across the plain. But it sure wasn't going to be easy getting up close to him. There was cattle there, there was kangaroos, noisy minor birds and apostle birds, all stationed at different places on the plain. We made our way into about 250 metres off these animals and things started to get a little bit tight. All the animals were watching and they knew something was wrong. In this sort of situation I like to keep my profile right down low. I use a technique called bum sliding where you get on your butt and you move yourself along with your hands. This technique allows you to carry a rifle on your lap. If you need be, you can sit up straight away and take a shot. Now this is a great technique for getting up close to deer but it certainly wears the butt out of your trousers. Unfortunately this stag stayed behind cover and with cattle in the distance and cattle off to our left and right hand sides it never allowed us a safe shot so we simply had to wait. As the deer slowly fed along the side of this basalt lava flow we made our way up to a fallen log and we'd hoped from this position we could get a shot as they moved out into the clear. Michael got himself ready to take a shot off the top of this log if the chance arose. As he was using Jacko's 7mm Remy mag and he knew that that's, that rifle was spot on at that distance. It's at this stage that one of our friendly apostle birds came down and decided to get a better look at us. Now these things are notorious for sounding the alarm and the deer seem to listen out for their squawks. As soon as they hear a flock of birds putting on a song and dance, they usually pack their bags and head off to safer pastures. You've hit him hard. Reload, reload. Uh, I've got him. As we approached this stag, we realised that Michael had taken a true monarch. This was a terrific trophy, but also a fantastic game animal that deserves our full respect. Strutty had to hold on that for quite some time. He just wouldn't come out of the timber. This is a stag and a half. Absolute quilter. Unreal strutty, unreal mate, unreal. A great animal. Absolutely. Yeah. 
absolute beauty. Yeah, Cobra. Yeah, really nice. This is bloody good, isn't it? Yeah. I heard all, I just heard all about it. Trouble here, it's a trouble to go buddy hunting with Jacko. Don't get too many like that, mate. No. Oh, that's a fucking bull tear, mate. Really? Absolutely. I'll tell you the story when I settled down. It was a bit of a good stalk, actually. We spotted him, I suppose. I'm bugging if I know. A couple hundred metres when we first saw him, a bit further than that. We stalked up, a, we stalked up a, a fair bit closer, but he was standing over there behind a, a bit of a bank of rocks and behind some trees, and we set ourselves up for a shot. Kept Clark kept on saying, wait for him to come out, but he had like one quick chance, but it wasn't steady enough. So we had to let that shot go. So, uh, we waited and the deer came away from us. They started walking a bit further away from us again. We made another approach and this time they were still going. In fact, the hinds even started running away. Well, I guess it was about a 200 metre shot uh, off the side of the tree. And uh, I was shaking a bit by the stage and uh, squeezed and hope like hell. I've shot him a fair way back, unfortunately, because we heard the thump and they took off. And I was just thinking, God, he's hit hard, but will he stop? And I'm thinking, where are those bloody dogs? <laughs> and uh, so we followed the, the hinds up and, oh, only a, another few minutes. And uh, the hinds had run off, or the does had run off, and this old fellow was standing looking at us, so we knew he was hit pretty hard. And as you can probably tell by the voice, I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, well done, mate. That's an absolute rip, I'm pleased. Oh, well done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you don't often see inners like that on a on a chittle. He's he's a beauty. Big old mature stag. So the shot was taken at about oh, about ten to six. Yeah. Evening seems to be more a popular time, doesn't it? He took a while to come out from those trees, though. He did. That's why I was getting the the shakes up, mate. Oh, he did well. Congratulate the guide on this one. Just stand, just stand. Gee, that'd be a first. Five thousand rocky knobs and the deer oh, on the second one we looked at. <laughs> sort of felt I knew where he'd be. Hey? I thought I, I reckon I knew oh, where he'd be. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> must have had a little bit out of here. You'll you take a stand at this. Have a beer. Hey? Have a beer tonight. Just one? Oh, a couple. And maybe <laughs> even a scotch. Thanks, Clark. No problems, mate. My pleasure. It's a fantastic trophy. No, all 4th of February. Not a bad Guinness, Strutty. Mate, it's the best one I've had. <laughs> You're looking at a very happy little hunter here. It's a happy little stuss, is it? Mate, it's been years since I've taken a trophy. <laughs> Especially something like this. Couldn't be happier, mate. Couldn't be happier. No, good luck to you, Colin. You deserve it. Yeah, you did very well. Under a little bit of pressure. A lot of pressure. I tend to put pressure on the good pressure. The next day was Tony's day. We headed out very early that morning and started checking out mobs of stags along the side of some of the big ravines. It wasn't long before we saw a mob of stags that had one in them that looked to be quite a trophy. closer inspection, we saw that one of the stags was very old and carried a head of about 28 and a half inches long. Let's watch this shot again. When you see a stag jump and kick like this after your shot, 
oftentimes that denotes a good clean heart shot. Now often when a stag is hit like this he'll only do a mad dash for about 50 metres but he's dead on his feet and he won't go too far. Well, ladies, I can't say I didn't warn you. These guys will never make manpower, and they certainly didn't care on a day like this. When the temperatures get up over that 40 degrees, the best place you can be is in the creek. After a refreshing dip in the creek, it was time to go out and look for Tony's second stag for the trip. After a couple of hours of checking out small mobs of stags along the side of some of the rocky bluffs, we came across a mob of about 50 stags bedded down in a small clump of timber. We had to work our way in on hands and knees to get in close enough for a shot, and when we did, I urged Tony to get up and try and get a shot at a particularly big stag that was lying down in the shade of one of the fallen trees. Realising that the wind wasn't going to keep in our favour for too much longer, Tony stood up behind the tree to get a clear shot and as he did, a young spiker saw him. He soon sounded the alarm and all the stags were on their feet and ready to go. Tony's shot was a good one, hitting this stag squarely through the shoulder, and he only went about 10 metres and Thanks fell just on the other side of the fallen tree. Thanks, we do. Get a look at that. Look at that for a mob of stag. Great, Jim. Had beautiful big thick coronets and good length of antler and good thickness. Certainly a trophy to be proud of. Look at the brow tines on beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful animal. That's a beautiful shape, Tony. Yeah. After all the back slapping and the photographs were taken, we all took a little bit of time just to sit there and admire this animal and give him his full respect because that's exactly what a fantastic game animal like this is too. He does a good job, doesn't he? 
That's a real good job. Yeah, well, with, with a spoon, it's still, it's still a good way to do, isn't it? Yeah, just get, especially in the hot climate, um, you can get your ears cooling a lot easier, a lot quicker. I'll just get in there to about, yeah, that's nearly all the way down there. Mm. But you stick your thumb in there. Just stick the thumb in while you've got something to hang on to, what's on yeah, the ear, yeah. and you just force it in there. Yeah. And uh, that's right down, nearly like three quarters of the way to the, getting him done. And that way you can cool that air up when you're out in this sort of in this sort of temperature. One of the unfortunate truths about any chittle deer herd in a remote location is they have a tendency to overpopulate. Under these circumstances, the best thing we can do to keep the landowners happy and keep numbers down is to get out and shoot as many females as you possibly can. When the temperature is up there over the 40 degree mark, you simply have to get out with the vehicle and start shooting. We do try to recover as much of the venison as we possibly can and as many skins as they make terrific floor mats. It's unfortunate that such a beautiful game animal isn't managed better. This is our world.